Well, welcome to the next chapter following the restoration of our two-foot gauge Fowler loco. You may remember that the last one ended with the frames being stripped and ready to go after the shot blasters. Well, they got straight on with it, and here's a, a video that they took. Um, it's a little wobbly here and there, but you can tell exactly what's happening. It's taking all the paint and debris off the metal to get it right back to a good, bare, etched surface to take the paint. Which, after no more than an hour or two in bare metal, it went straight into. Here it is in its rather attractive cream undercoat. While it was bare metal, we took the opportunity to do non-destructive testing on it to find any cracks. And although you can clearly see these with your naked eye, it, the corners of all of the horn um, guide holes are pretty much 90 degrees, and it's a known weak point in any kind of flat frame. And you can see here, these are historic welds where the people at Tully Sugar have, have clearly welded it up to try and solve the same problem in the past. Um, we've identified them all, masked off before we painted so that the coded welder can come in and weld them up properly and finish them off flush, which uh, has now been done too. Hopefully photographs of that soon. We also of course had the cylinders and smoke box saddle shot blasted at the same time. Um, there's still repair work needs to be done. You can see the studs coming out of the front and the back of that cylinder are bent. They'll be removed and and replaced. Um, but fundamentally the cylinders are now back to bare metal and primed so they won't deteriorate anymore and we can see what we've got. Same thing goes for the smoke box. Um, you can see when we look inside it that the pitting isn't, isn't too bad. It's been well protected by layers of oil and muck down inside there for many years and, and with the rust off it now it's, um, it's again good to be finally fettled and finished and put back in again. Moving on to the workshop now, Ian here is machining a, a dolly mandrel that we can use to bash out the tubes from the firebox end of the boiler. It is an interesting double-edged sword this one because the tubes are in such good condition um, that they're an absolute nightmare to get out. There's no rust and thinning or anything like that on the tubes so we're really trying to say, take out a perfectly viable set of tubes as you can see here. The, the debris on the surface is mostly salts rather than rust and they are therefore tight in what you probably saw there was a really thick and meaty front tube plate. Again, whilst it makes it hard work at this stage and you can see I'm, I'm struggling to get the first tube out of the boiler here, it bodes well for the general condition of the boiler which obviously impacts massively on how much we're likely to have to spend to recommission it and get it back fully with boiler stickers on it, ready to play. <laughs> Moving on to some of the smaller stuff, here you can see the uh, regulator gland and quadrant on the back head, uh, on the drawings. Um, this was firmly into the back head, but we managed to get it off, I think, in an earlier video. Um, here it is in our bead blasting cabinet up at the steam workshop. This is smaller glass beads rather than the sand that they use in the shot blasting process for the frames. You can see here, it's difficult to see because it's dusty in the cabinet, but you can see it removing some of the years of... Um, corrosion and oxidisation on the bronze and, and muck as well. Back to bare metal so that we can see what we've got and decide what we want to do with it from there. It's a laborious process but always quite satisfying when you end up with the bare fresh cast metal. Now restoring or rebuilding any locomotive is a learning curve. You make decisions as you go based on what you find. Um, in this case, the regulator quadrant was extremely battered. It's clearly had quite a rough life. The active face where the regulator slides uh, in the quadrant, as you can see here, is, is bruised and bashed from the, the years at Tully Sugar Mill. Same thing goes for the back face here. Now, we don't want to build a new locomotive and we don't want our loco to look like a replica. It wants to be an original restored loco and it wants to show the, the life that the engines had. Um, so to that end, we are leaving the back face with all its bruises. But the front face, which is the active quadrant where the regulator slides, is milled here. We're taking a millimetre or two off just to get it back to a fresh, crisp surface, as you can see here. So functionally, it'll be as good as new. But visually, it'll retain its battle scars, so it's restored, authentic loco. More fittings now. These are the gauge glass fittings. Um, the top and bottom have an extension to get it a little bit further away from the back head. This is the drawing of the top fitting, of which we only have one. And this is the bottom fitting, of which, as you can see, we have two. Um, the top fitting we're going to clean up, just like the bottom ones have been done here in the bead blast cabinet. And we're sending it off to be scanned and a replica part to be printed and then manufactured. Um, here we're removing one of the steel studs from the bottom fitting extensions. 
This is one of the valve guide motion brackets. Um, we only have one. The other one you might remember from an earlier video was shattered. Um, but we're restoring it here, fillering it, priming it, getting it up ready, and that too will go away for scanning. And then we'll make a rapid prototype of it and make another casting for the left-hand one to match the right-hand one we've got here. Luckily they're symmetrical, so we can use the one that we do have to create the pattern for the one that we don't. Next you see here the blowdown valve on the bottom of the back head, um, underneath the floor of the, the footplate of the loco. Again, all of these valves, it's a case of cleaning them down, getting rid of all the years of grime and salt and lime scale and scum that's been built up on there. Break them apart, pull all the parts back to their bare metal, refurbish the internal surfaces so that they can work again, bead blast them up to bare metal, polish them up if necessary. And ultimately you can usually restore most things back to being fully functional again. It's quite a satisfying process and certainly when you see the transformation from the before or after, it, it's, it's nice to see things coming together. Moving on to the rods now. These are the oil pots for the top of the motion. Um, as you can see, the one on the right is this Tully built replica, just steel, whereas the one on the left is the original casting. Um, here, as you see it go there, is pressing out the bronze bearings, the bushes <laughs> that are in the connecting rods. Um, it's a 12 ton press, so we're not talking huge amounts of pressure, but certainly it sometimes felt like it took the entire 12 tons, and occasionally we've had to apply heat to expand the metal of the rod to ease the uh, grip it has on the bush that we can push out. You'll see here, it'll drop to the floor in a minute. The bushes themselves have a flat face on one side and a radius on the other side to fit onto the root radius of the crank pin as it goes into the fly crank. Um, as you can see here, this is one of the other ones that we had to really apply heat to to expand it a little first. This is the big end of the connecting rod. and The little end pressed straight out but the big end needed heat to free it. You can see a mild spattering of what appears to be white metal there coming on the rod itself from, from earlier repairs. This is interesting, if you look closely you can see that there's already been a rebushing of this loco done. The original bronze bearing has been machined out and a smaller one's been pressed internally into it, so it's sort of a double ring there. Again, we'll be making new ones of these because the crank pins are going to be ground down, so the actual hole in the middle needs to be smaller to fit the new pins. Well, after finishing with all the valve gear, we moved on to some more of the bushes. This one is the bracket that holds the brake way shaft. You may remember we had a real fight getting this off in the last video. Um, this is a picture of where it fits on the loco. Because of the eccentric forces pressed on this, the bush in the bracket has worn incredibly eccentrically. Just look at that. Um, so again, obviously, we'll be putting a brand new one in here. That's that. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with another video.